Greetings and welcome. This is the Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona, Spain. And I think this is one of the most iconic areas whenever I come out here to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress. Everybody like this lady out here, they're all taking beautiful pictures here, yeah? right? <laughs> but the interesting part of it is that this just signifies the amazing excitement that's going to take place inside. It's going to be an absolute riot. See, this hasn't happened for three years. I mean, it's happened last year. It's happened before offline. But, you know, with COVID and everything else, it didn't happen. They're calling this the Revenge Mobile World Congress 2023. Every company is supposed to come out with all guns blazing. And that's what I'm going to take you on an epic journey on the Cell Guru Show right now. You know, I think I'm talking too much. You want to see the amazing stuff inside. This is the world's largest mobile event. You're about to get started with me inside. So you play games on your phone, you play games on your PC. What's the big difference? Your PC has great cooling, right? A liquid cooling, a pump that runs the liquid through. But how can you do it on a phone? I mean, that's just major technology. Can't fit it in here. Yes, you can. OnePlus has shown a concept phone, Cryoflux liquid. That's not animation, that's actual real liquid running right through the phone. Can you imagine? It's cooling the phone down by many, many degrees. You know, this has got a clear cover, Cryoflux, a pump inside that is making all that liquid flow right through. It's got this halo light effect around the camera. And even more interestingly, all of this helps with keeping the phone stable through gaming, through multimedia, cools the phone down, charges the battery much faster. Your phone will be cool for everything you're doing, even if you're out in the hot summer. It'll keep the phone really, really cool. And then they've got this incredible thing where ray tracing, which is the future of gaming, those games are about to be released and this phone has that too. So I have to say that this is an incredible advancement from OnePlus. The only thing I have to ask OnePlus, Bhai sahab, concept mat rakhna, get this phone out. Motorola shows off an absolutely amazing phone. More hopefully, it's going to be called the Motorola Riser. From Razer to Riser. Why is it called the Riser? Well, because the phone actually rises. So five inches and then suddenly it becomes unfolds, rises up to 6.5. Lots and lots of great use cases, which I'm going to show you right now. The software interface has been customized by Motorola to adapt depending on the app running. So while watching YouTube, the display automatically expands depending on the screen size. While the motor riser is just in its concept stage, the potential of a device like this seems limitless. One of the big highlights of the Mobile World Congress 2023 was the anticipation that Techno is going to be launching off their folding phone. Well, no more anticipation. It's here, it's with me, and it's looking really, really good. So this is now the biggest fold-out phone in the world. 7.85 inches when I've opened it out, and that's really, really a big deal, which also means automatically the outside screen also becomes one of the biggest in a folding phone ever. It's also much thinner than the competition. So when it's opened out like this, I think it's about six point something mm. You can feel the difference right away. The other part that they've really concentrated on is going big on optics. So three cameras, a 50 megapixel plus 50 megapixel at the back, a third camera. There's a camera out here, dual cameras that they've given for the front also. 5,000 mAh battery. Most folding phones, Samsung about 4,400 mAh. This one goes to 5,000 mAh a nice 2K screen. So all the things that they really want in a folding phone that usually isn't, you know, available because of the amount of real estate. And the hinge actually works well. Okay, great stuff at the Mobile World Congress, but very, very quickly, I'm going to take you back to India for an incredible launch of an incredible phone. This is the Vivo V27 Pro. We got our hands on this phone, and this is our detailed review. We 
Vivo has launched one of the more interesting smartphones this year with the Vivo V27 Pro. There are many things to be excited about from the brand new MediaTek Dimensity 8200 processor to a whopping 50MP selfie camera. Let's get started. Right from the start, we have to talk about one of the signature features of this phone. The fact that its color changes in bright sunlight. How this works is that the paint on the phone reacts to UV light and the hue becomes darker. In our testing, we were able to notice slight changes in color when using the phone outdoors versus indoors. If you want to see the colors truly change, we suggest using a UV flashlight if you have one. The back of the phone feels nice to hold with a textured fingerprint resistant back which makes it a lot less slippery than other phones with glass backs. The device is also not too heavy, weighing in at 182 grams which means you can watch content for extended periods of time without putting too much strain on your wrist. Speaking of watching content, the 6.78 inch display feels bigger than usual due to the evenly thin bezels on both sides. The 120Hz refresh rate in fact adds to the smooth viewing experience and we found the image quality to be crisp and vibrant. The device comes with an HDR10 Plus certified display and its color accuracy is very good. The presence of three color options in the display settings also means you can choose the color temperature you prefer, whether it's cooler or warmer tones. Now let's talk about the performance. The brand new MediaTek Dimensity 8200 processor is surprisingly powerful. In both day-to-day -day use as well as during gaming, we found no cases of stutters or lags. The chipset feels well optimized and definitely is a powerhouse when it comes to gaming. We tested it and played games like Subway Surfer, Free Fire and Minecraft and found no frame drops or heating issues. What's remarkable is that the phone itself hasn't been marketed as a gaming phone but still holds up in terms of performance and cooling. The Vivo V27 Pro uses Android 13 with its proprietary FunTouch OS version 13. The software is extremely customizable with the app drawer also having an expandable recommended apps category. If you are someone who likes customizing the look of the apps on your phone and like to play around with the color scheme, you will be happy with the software installed. The device is powered by a 4600mAh battery which is a bit disappointing as the previous V25 Pro had a larger battery housed in a smaller phone. But having said that, the battery life of the phone is still incredible. Using the phone consistently for listening to music and playing games, we did not have to charge it till the end of the day. The battery optimization through the software and hardware is extremely impressive. The phone supports 66 watt of flash charge but comes with an even more impressive 80 watt flash charger. So while the Vivo V27 Pro would not be able to use this completely, the phone still charges extremely fast. In our testing, we found that we were able to charge the phone from single digits to all the way full in less than an hour. This is very impressive for a phone that is not a flagship model. Now let's talk about the camera because in our use we found this to be one of the best selfie cameras we have used this year. But before we get to that, let's first talk about the camera holistically. The camera uses a Sony IMX 766V sensor that has been specially customized for Vivo. The device has a triple camera setup on the back and a lone selfie camera on the front. The primary camera has a 50MP sensor with the photos captured being incredibly detailed regardless of low light. The pictures click keep all their natural details and the colors too don't seem too oversaturated. The lack of background noise and the crisp and vibrant colors really make the picture stand out. The 8MP ultra wide lens also is no slouch either, offering high contrast and more than enough dynamic range. While the detailing isn't as great as the main camera, the camera app doesn't over sharpen the image so the pictures still have a natural feel to them. Coming to the 2MP macro camera, the shots are quite good. The only problem we found with taking close-up shots was that you had to be at an exact distance from the subject being photographed to get good enough detail. The pictures don't seem to be consistent, with some capturing breathtaking detail while others seem to be unable to capture colour properly. There's also a special feature for Indian audiences as the phone ships with a specialised LUT for wedding photography. For those who do not know, LUT stands for Look Up Table which transforms color values to better highlight photos depending on the situation. This is done to minimize touching of photos in post-production. The Vivo V27 Pro comes with a specialized LUT for Indian weddings in portrait mode, where the photos being captured can highlight reds, pastel colors or neutral colors depending on the setting. Considering the amount of photos that are clicked at a wedding, we think this is a great addition. 
The device supports shooting 4K videos at 60 fps with the primary and ultra wide camera supporting stabilization. The main camera captures videos with a lot of detail and no noise. Finally, we have to talk about the MVP of the camera, the 50MP front facing lens. The level of detail and sharpness is unparalleled and even give flagship phones that are more than double its price a run for their money. If you are someone who uploads a lot of selfies onto social media, we think this is the phone for you. Priced at Rs 37,999, the phone is an amazing all-rounder. If you are looking for a phone with a budget under 40,000, we cannot recommend the Vivo V27 Pro enough. This may be the most fun you're going to have at MWC. This is Lee. He and I almost started off with this, but that's not the fun part. No, 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 Lee, there's no way. <laughs> but that's not what we're going to do here. What we're going to do here is this is Panzer glass. He's going to apply this on the phone. And he's going to do some of the strangest things any human being has ever done to a phone. Is that right, Lee? That's right. All right, so we'll apply it. Hammer, cutter, and then a special weapon. That hammer on the phone. Watch this. All right. So we will start yes. with a very thin piece of glass. That's the Panzer glass. The glass can be applied up to 200 times during application, even if it gets <laughs> dirty. Oh, okay, I thought maybe he's going to hammer my... <laughs> <laughs> if it gets dirty, I will just clean it. And then I can just reapply it. And it's done. Done. And then I can cut on it. And remember, he's cutting onto the glass. Nothing. You can show its strength with the <laughs> baby hammer. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to show this to you as is, nothing's happened. I'll show it to you with the screen off. Nothing's happened. I'm going to take this off and show you the screen inside. Nothing. <laughs> Lee, awesome. No, it's been nice awesome. meeting you. This is where things get very interesting at the Mobile World Congress. I've come down to the Nokia booth and the G22. It's about to get released very, very shortly in India. It's looking like a great phone from Nokia. But it has one thing, besides great other features, it has one thing that has completely blown my mind. There's a big, big, big campaign now that is going on. Your right to repair your own product, especially your phone. Why pay big bucks? Go wait for two or three weeks, then be told, and it'll cost this much. You could do it on your own. And you're like, okay, that could be tough because I don't know how to do it. Very, very easy. So Nokia has actually collaborated with iFixit. It's a massive, massive company, okay? And all you do, this is all public knowledge now. They put out all the videos. You can do four things with the G22, which I'm going to show you right now. So replacement guides for the back cover, for the battery, for the charging port, and for the screen, which means you can actually replace all these four in minutes on your own. That's the phone you'll buy. You need simple tools, which they'll give you. Uh, a tool which actually takes out the back cover, a little bit of stuff out here. All you need is three or four little things, which is also given right out there. And you can disassemble a phone, which I'm going to show you right now. Disassemble a phone, a G22, in minutes and replace it. This is just the display part of it. They'll send you a new display, just put it on a screw or two is all you need. 
battery, just one little adhesive. There are, the phone has not been glued in. It actually has these little locks. They just open out on their own, which we are showing you right now. And then they'll send you a new battery. Just take off that little film, put it in, new battery. They'll send you the display, a few screws out, put it in, you're done. The, the charging area or even the back cover if you've cracked it or you want a new one. All of it you can do very easily. So Huawei no longer in India, that whole Android controversy and everything else that has been happening at politics hasn't gotten over as yet. But this is the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. I really wish after seeing this phone, they were in India. So beautiful looking phone, brilliant screen, great processor, top of the line everything. But it's the physical aperture in this. And for those that know what I'm talking about, a phone with a physical changing aperture, f4.0 to f1.4. So whether it's bokeh, whether it's the amount of light it can capture, it completely and totally changes. So this one can actually, I'm going to show you two things. The physical aperture change and the super macro of this phone. Beautiful stuff. Apple's Bob Borchers visited India last week and our host Rajiv Markhani has got some exclusive scoop for you. Catch the full interview coming soon right here on Cell Guru. So Bob, welcome to India even though this is not your first one. You know, you're a veteran, I should ask you places to meet, to go to, people to meet, food to eat. But what I'm really excited is that you've come in here to meet with a lot of content creators. We're seeing this incredible flurry of colors, which yeah, is all really shot right. in an iPhone, which That's right. is just marvelous to see this. But prior to me jumping into that, that excites me. Mm -hmm. I want to set context here, right? So the fact that you were involved with the first iPhone, the fact that the energy and the vibe at that time in Apple must have been dramatically different from the company it is today, right? Mm. I mean, it was almost like a startup culture at that time, right? Can you just take us through, in a way, maybe in a few sentences, what it felt like? And you also did say at one point that the first iPhone was just about okay, not great. Yet, yet that's the product that started a revolution. Take us through those times. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the warm welcome. And uh, I'll look for tips from you. <laughs> I'm sure you'll, you'll have plenty Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. The, and the thing I'd say is that you mentioned that the vibe or the culture must feel different then from now mm -hmm. and actually it doesn't really? and that is the magic of apple is that that passion for creating new products for exciting customers for putting tools in the hands of creators everywhere that is what fuels us then that's what fuels us now and that's one of the things i think that makes apple such a special special place it also makes it the place where you could give rise to a product such as the the iPhone, um, and I would I'd say I never thought it was an okay anything. I thought it was extraordinary okay. in its own way, but we didn't know exactly how it was going to be extraordinary. If you remember, we started out with it's going to be a revolutionary phone, the best iPod you we ever created, and put the internet in your pocket. <laughs> right, right. Which of those did it turn turn the world oh. on its head? All of them, but the internet in your pocket is you know was the thing that has made this such a revolutionary technology and time. But at the end of the day, what fuels us at Apple is the same thing that fueled us then, is making amazing products that are, live at this intersection of creativity and technology. All right, so it seems like this is pretty much it. We've got a lot more to show you. Of course, this is just our first show here on Cell Guru from the Mobile World Congress. We'll come back next week. Don't miss it. I've got some great stuff to show you.